This week on Rugged Expeditions, we're going back to Uganda, and we're gonna be hunting some of the most unique antelope found anywhere, right at the source of the mighty Nile River. We just spotted a really good bush buck. We're gonna have to try and get around these bushes, but if you push him, then he's just gonna run out of the county, so we kinda got a little easy on it. Presented by Global Rescue. There when you need them most. The Kaboya area is game rich. There's a lot of wildlife here, but we came here specifically to collect the Uganda cob and the Nile bushbuck. Two very unique species, and the best place to hunt them is in the Kaboya wildlife area. Hey, how about it, Ghani? What's up, uh, How are you, man? Just picked it up. Uh, you doing good? Doing good. I've known Bruce Martin for years. Great guy, has some great hunting areas. Hunted with him for the very rare Sesi Island Sitatunga, as well as Nile Buffalo in the past. So getting to come back and hunt with him, I knew it was gonna be a good time, and then he'd have a really good show for us. It's called cow, is it, man? Uh, you have all kinds of presents and stuff, huh? Good to see you, man. You too. It's always great to be hunting with Skulk Tate. Good friend, great pH, and always a blast. Ever since Bruce got the Kaboya area and protected it from the poachers and the cattle, it's amazing the amount of wildlife that's come back. In 2002, there were about 8,000 head of cattle and 30 Uganda cob. I negotiated with the government and uh, we started moving the cattle off and by 2005 we signed an agreement that I would manage the reserve on behalf of the government. We're not a mainstream wildlife reserve so our green safaris are a small part of the capital generated by this concession. Hunters are obviously the big income in fact, generating that amount of money, uh, the Uganda cop have gone through the roof. Uh, it's been incredible. Yeah. Hunting dangerous game is probably me and Ellen's favorite pastime. But sometimes it's nice to slow down the pace and go after critters like cop, bushbuck, things like this. today. It might be this weather change. We've got a bunch of clouds and thunder and lightning coming in. This one here is not quite big enough, but we got close to them, which has been tough to do. Yesterday they were standing around out in the open, but with this weather they've come into this bush. So we're having to ease along and try and see if we can get in tight on him. He's not bad, but he's just not quite there and it's still early in the hunt, so what do you think of this one, Skulk? Should we take him, or is he no, still he, young? Yeah, he's an old one, but he's not quite long enough. We can do better than this one. We still got a day or two. Yeah. Boy, it's sure weird, though, how they're in this thick stuff now, huh? Yeah. Gives us lots of cover. Yeah. Well, at least we can get up on close to him, but with this wind swirling around, this is kind of a... Not as easy as it looked when we were first coming in, is it? No. Oh, there's another one over there. Let's go. Oh, crap. He's gone over the top. Is that him going over the top? Too? Yeah, that's him on the top, too. This went over. Well, maybe we can get up over. There's no cover here, though. If we go around, maybe we can still get some cover there and cut around. It looks like that 
uh, bushy line goes around that way. Yeah. Let's go try that. <clears throat> We've been chasing this thing and chasing him. We came all the way through this stuff here. We got to this log, figuring this would be a great place to whack him. And off he goes. He's chasing another one out of his territory, so. We finally got him out in an open area where we thought we could do some damage, but not today, or not tonight, anyhow. Well, Skulk, we go again. I can only run so far. <laughs> Skulk takes famous line. Ah, here's the truck, perfect. I think, Skulk, this one there is better than that one we're just sneaking up on that. Yes. He's wide. Yeah. He doesn't Flare. flare, but he's a lot wider. That's a nice bull. What do you think? Should we go after him instead of that other one? I think we go after this one. This one here. We're gonna have to cross this big wide open plane, but he's got his head up right now. These cob are rutting right now, and it's hard to keep these males out of these big herds. So when we're getting them into these big herds, we've got all these eyes watching us. We had a good shot for just a second, and then he turned and whirled away before I could get the shot off. But now he's joined back up with this big herd again, so we're gonna have to try and get him away from these because it's just tough, tough. And even the long range stuff, there's so many of them in the, when they get joined up in these big herds that you can't even get a long range shot, let alone shooting a 375, which isn't exactly a long range rifle. What do you think, Skulk? Should we go around like this and? Yeah, try and cut him off this side. Yeah, that's probably our only hope. Take this line of bushes. Yeah, let's go do that. Is that him out here? Yeah, first one of that group. This? No. Yeah, that's him right there. Yeah, he's the one got his head down there. Feeding. To the left of that anthill? Yes. That's the one. Rolled him over. <laughs> Good shot, man. Let's make sure he's dead. No, he's finished. Good job. That was a lot of work for, <laughs> for a cop. <laughs> it was weird how that one we saw, the original one, it was a nice cob. I mean, he was a great one that anybody would want to take, but then when we came around that bush and I saw that flared out one, I like that flare. Yeah, like that. Me, yeah. Nice shape. That's a nice. Really kind of non-typical for a cob, but nice. Yeah. Very really distinctive. Let's go see what he looks like. Nice, huh? Very nice one. What a beauty. Excellent trophy. Man, after all that crawling around and all that stuff, huh? <clears throat> Look at this fantastic gigantic cob. Skull, can you hold that for me for just yep. a second? Look at that, huh? Nice flaring horns. You don't see that flare like that very often, is it? No. Boy, it's just a <clears throat> great trophy. I'm so happy to get one. Out here in these open plains, it's been a tough, tough hunt. Lots of times you think, well, you can just get off and whack one, it'd be no problem. And they are very, very hip to the program. Especially these old males like this that have been around the block for a while. Another great trophy in Uganda. Here we are at Kaboya Wildlife Reserve, the stronghold of the Uganda cob. Thanks to Bruce Martin and his crew for 
bringing these things back from the brink of extinction. We're able to hunt them now, and what a great trophy it is. As if it wasn't hot enough already, being in Uganda at this time of year, it's going to be pushing 95 to 100 every day. Of drought, but now you throw in we a couple really good rainstorms right just to kick that humidity area, factor the right off the scale. Walking back one afternoon, we ran into one of these weird things that happens after the first rains come, where a whole bunch of flying termites had come out of their termite mounds and were just coming out by the tens of thousands. It was a sight to behold. Look at this bug here. It's this red velvety, they're saying it's a mite and they're all over the place. It just rained the last couple days and they've come out and there's thousands of them all over the place. We saw a bunch of birds eating them earlier today. But what an incredible little bug. Uganda was once referred to as the jewel of the Nile by the British who colonized the country in about 1890. Bordered by the huge expanse of Lakes Victoria and Albert, the country boasts fantastic natural resources and abundant wildlife. One of the other great trophies that you can find in the Kaboya wildlife area is the Nile bushbuck. They're very difficult to hunt. There's not a lot of areas to hunt for them. So that exclusivity of them makes them a real challenge and an exciting trophy to collect. Let's go if there's one there. Any bushbuck hunting in Africa is really tough because they like to hang in thick bush and they're very crafty. And that's also true for the Nile bushbuck. Unfortunately, this bushbuck has a broken horn and is not the quality Alan is looking for. So the hunt continues. After scouring the plains of the Kaboya area in Uganda, J. Allen Smith and his guide, Skulk Tate, have set their sights on a bush buck. We just spotted a really good bush buck, but we just bumped him. But he was out here in this open plain. What he's doing out there at this time of day, we don't know, but he's a big buck. So we're going to have to try and get around these bushes, but these bush buck will go from clump to clump of these thickets that are out here. And if you push him, then he's just gonna run out of the county. So we kinda gotta be a little easy on it. Is that him with his head in the bushes there? Yeah, he's just to the left of that bush there. And there he's down in the bush, you can just see his body. He just lifted his head, it's him. God, I got brush right here. Let's check where he's going. <laughs> I just didn't have a shot here. I was trying to shoot through here, but I had all this brush here. And then I tried to relocate, and I think he might have seen me. That's why he bailed. Huh? You know the thing about these things, these bushbuck, is that it's so much like our whitetail at home. Because you get this same kind of a deal where they sneak around, and they don't want to come out in the daylight like this. You know, they're going to stay in these thickets, and they're going to go from patch to patch. And even the way they hunker down, and they put their head back when they're sneaking through, same thing as our white tails. The way they stick their head in the bush. Yeah, just like that. No. They'll hide like that, you know, where you or you see one and you don't know if he's, it's him or not because you can't get a clear view of him. Rarely do you get them out in the open except, you know, in the evening or first thing in the morning. Well, I guess let's just try and sneak around and get another crack at him. Huh? Yeah, we'll cut to the left here. Get to the next bush. Yeah. See if we can see him from there. No sense in quitting now. I see him now. Mm -hmm. Still in that bush. That's a long poke, Skulk, with a 375 from here. Uh, that's our last chance. I think you must lie down for the shot. 
We're gonna have to get some altitude though. There's all this flat grass and stuff. Let's get to this end. You got him, Scott? Yeah, I got him. I just need him to turn a little bit. All right, there he's turned. I'm going to take him. Okay. <laughs> he's not going anywhere. <sighs> These things, man, how many have we seen? dozen in the last two days. Males that we had no crack at all this time. We finally got a chance at them. This has been a great hunt, man. There might not be a pot of gold at the end of that rainbow skull, but it looks like there's a cop. Huh? A cop of gold. He's as big as he looked. Look at the markings on him, huh? What a beautiful bush. Man. Man, oh man. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh. Wow, isn't he? Look at that, huh? Look at those horns. Oh, he's all caked in mud. You can see his markings on his face. Look how old he is. He's all from fighting and his neck's all scarred up. Wow. The Nile bushbuck. He's got spots on him. They get in the shadows like this and you can hardly even see them when they're standing in there. It's nice to come all the way to one of your dream places like Uganda and hunt a species that's so rare and found only in very few places nowadays. You know, we were talking about whitetails earlier. Look at that, huh? Kind of got the tail of a whitetail too. Flags when it runs. Likes to do the sneaky sneak. I think we did him a bit of a favor, Skulk. Look at his all bones in the back and... A very old one. He's done, he wasn't gonna breed anymore and... Oh, just the kind you wanna take. Another fabulous trophy from Uganda.